Hi. Hey. I'm Jill. I'm Ray. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go cruising. Okay. It's a true october -y day today. Oh, it so very much is. I'm waiting for a crow to fly by and it's a black cat to run through. Gray skies, gloomy with all of the fall colors. I love fall. Me too. I hate like I like cool days, kind of like this one where it's sweater weather. I like ah oh, sweater weather. I don't like so cold where it's bone chilling and I'm just not enjoying myself. <laughs> right. I can't stand. No, I don't like that. It's very it's very chilly today. I hate it when like I tell people that like I hate the cold. They're like, "Aren't you a native?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's why I hate the cold." <laughs> well, you're <laughs> you're also a reptile, so. <laughs> Like, I, I was born here, I've lived here my whole life. Yes, it doesn't mean I belong here. <laughs> the dragon doesn't like the cold. I like dry <laughs> heat. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've had a heat stroke. That shit sucks. <laughs> and I don't want a heat stroke. I just want to be warm to where I can, you know, be free. <laughs> be free. <laughs> I don't have to carry around a jacket or wonder if I need one. <laughs> I would love to see autumn in, like, the East Coast. <gasps> Yeah. Like, that's still a goal for me if it is for so you, girl. Great. Like going to like Massachusetts or Boston yeah, in the fall. I, yeah, I know. That'd be so fun. Yeah. And explore some ghost stuff. Yes. And witch fun. stuff. That'd be fun. So fun. Just interesting. So I'm, much history there, too. So today, it is my turn to cover a history lesson. Just kidding. No, I don't. But I did find something interesting that I thought like would be fun to share. And that is... And do you, have you ever heard of Lady Jane Digby? Have you heard that name before? I've heard Lady Jane, but I don't know if that's the same. <laughs> no, Lady, Lady Jane Digby. I don't know if anyone's heard of her. Uh, I just found out about her. And her life is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Oh, she, she is a woman of, like, rebellious and just, she's just a badass, kind of. Oh, deer! We're in the mountains, so we see deer. Oh, okay. that's so cute. The, all the Bambies. All the Bambies. <laughs> we didn't have Bambies. That's what my dad would say. Yeah, my, my mom would say the same thing. We don't Bambi. Anyway. Sorry, Trash, sorry. So, Lady Jane Digby. Lady Digby was an English aristocrat, and she was famous for her remarkable love life and her lifestyle. Ooh. Again, she was, like, she was just a woman ahead of her time. Okay. Uh, she had four husbands and many lovers, including uh, a Lord Ellenborough, a king, and his son, and a bohemian nobleman. Oh, this girl was just diverse. Austrian prince, and a Greek general, and just to name a few. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> wow. I mean. <laughs> so so that, like, that itself was like, wait, what? Like, and, and mind you, this was all during, like, the late 1800s. Or, like, mid-1800s. It's scandalous. It's very scandalous. So Lady Jane was born in Holcomb Hall, Norfolk, um, April 3rd, 1807. Okay. And she's a daughter of an admiral named Henry Digby and Lady Jane Elizabeth Coke. Okay, just <laughs> straightforward, huh? <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Um, a lot of what I found was from this website called Madame Guillotine. Ooh, um, fun. That was a fun, it was a fun website. Like, I, I might use her again, like whoever this vlog person was because this had a lot of information. So I got Shout a lot out. of like the information. Yeah, Madame Guillotine. Um, so I got a lot of the information from that website. And whew, what a life. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to hear about it. So Jane was, um, she's the middle child of three and she's the only girl. And uh, Madame Guillotine describes her home life and her um, father, you know, like she described all of her upbringing like an Austin novel, like Jane austen -y. Okay. Bridgerton, you know. Oh. <laughs> it was you like, know, that's ringing a bell. Bridgerton and all, like, that time period. It was very much that time period. And she was, you know, a young 
lady who a young rich lady who was just beautiful and like sought after and popular you know, she was and she was daddy's own little girl so you know so she was just like treated like a little princess um so of course um she was gonna be like eyeballed and men were gonna want to marry her like lining up yeah and her her dad was um it said that he was like an exceptional naval officer and he saw action and during the french Rubli uh, the french revolutionary war and the uh the napoleon war sick so he he saw a lot and he got he saw a lot he saw a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and he he got rich from you know the prize money and like the established the treasures yeah, and like, stuff from all of his journeys and yeah. stuff like that so he that's how they got their family fortune so they're like a very um respected family socialites again like <laughs> like the bridgertons you know yeah that's what i was like picturing in my mind that's what i'm picturing now <laughs> And Jane would like when her young age, she was a definite tomboy, and she was like as Madame Guillotine described, a hero, a heroine in training. Um, she had her mother's beauty, charm. She had a vivacious attitude, willful charisma. She was very sophisticated. Like she was like all out. Yeah, she was a triple threat. You know, she was just really. She was the catch the boys wanted. Well, and she was just. A very smart young lady, you know, like she was just very bold and beautiful. And she like, I don't know. It's just kind of like how every woman wants to aspire herself to be, you know, this like charming, strong willed young woman that can be bold and beautiful, you know, doesn't nothing will knock her down. Yeah, um, that's kind of this how she's described throughout her life. She's just this like she was just a. A dynamite gal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Lady Jane was married in October. Um, so October 15th, 1824. She was a 17-year-old who got married to um, a handsome um, baron who later became an earl. His name was Edward Law. He was a 34-year-old man. These last names, man. <laughs> what? 34? He was 34. He was, uh, he also, like, became a, a governor general of India. So he, he had, like, a very, like, uh, high title. Yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah. Um. Still, like, I get back then, especially age was just kind of a number, but. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't say that. <laughs> I know, but, I mean, do, do you, but. I, I, but... Hey, she was attracted to the older Guy, it was just charming. I mean, I fell for it. My max is two <laughs> years, girl. Like, I can't. <laughs> by all means, it's it's implied that she was wooed by this handsome older guy. You know, like, she was just, like, she fell for him. It was common And back he, then. yeah, uh, he, for all you know, maybe he didn't look ugly. I don't know. He said he was handsome. <laughs> well, anyway, um, you know, sparks flew, so they got married, um, but it, their puppy love didn't last very long. The couple did have a child. His name was Arthur Dudley Law. What a name! <laughs> uh, Arthur Dudley Law. Like Arthur Dudley. Wow, that sounds like a like a drag name if you wanted it to be. But who are, I'm Arthur Dudley Law. Oh God. But that that's that's a name for the books. I thought it was a cute name. <laughs> I love it. It's so, intense. So Arthur Dudley Law was born wow. in February, February fifteenth. 1828 but sadly he only lived to the age of two he passed away in 1830 with that name he only lived to two mm -hmm. i it doesn't i don't it didn't say like what happened he probably got sick i Most mean it likely. was the 1800s you know very common he could have drowned in a pond <sighs> but after he passed away like the Jane and her husband, Edward, they were, like, starting to be on the rocks anyway. And so, like, when he passed away, they were, like... We're done. Mm, yeah, they were over each other. That's um sad. And he... So, Edward Law, because of, like... How terrible. His, um, his title and everything. So, he was always gone. And he was gone for weeks on a time. And so, she felt neglected by her husband. And it was painfully obvious that they were not compatible anymore. So... Like most women during that time, when you're bored and lonely and you're ignored for a long period of time, what do you do? She found herself some fun. Ah, she, you, ha you have an affair. 
if you have an affair. Which I don't that. approve. I don't approve. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but. You have an affair. <laughs> you have an affair. That's what she did. She had an affair. Oof. So, of course, <laughs> Jane had an extramarital affair with a dashing colonel. Dashing. Yep. Who was her cousin. Oh, come on. George, Again, common. George Anson. Whom apparently she had a thing since childhood for, like... Uh, well, here, your <laughs> dreams came true. I'm so happy for you. It, it was also speculated, again, this was in the website, it was speculated that George could have been Arthur's father. But it, it wasn't proved, like, never proven or anything. Um, wow. So they had a long time affair for, like, a couple years, I think. Um, wow. Behind her husband's back, obviously. Clearly, if Arthur was two and he could have been the dad, mm-hmm. like... So, so it was like a... Just a long time Ongoing. affair that they probably they probably started when they were younger. For Jesus. all you know what I mean, like ew. <laughs> oh. Um. Anyway, oh. things eventually ended with George and uh, Jane was heartbroken because basically, I I know even though he's her cousin, it was her first love. It sounds like trigger so warning she, incest. <laughs> Uh, so she soon moved on, though, and she moved on to a bohemian prince. Oh, here's the bohemian mm-hmm. now. Okay. His name was Felix of, uh, I might butcher this, but Schwarzenberg? 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 I don't know, but it was funny. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. Schwarzenberg. It's Schwarzenberg. <laughs> I, saw, I feel like Rose Nyland. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. He was <laughs> he was attached to the Austrian embassy in London, so that's where they crossed. You know, their circles were crossing, so that's how she met him. Um, and he fell for her. You know, she was young, she was beautiful, busty. Mm-hmm. So they had a they had an affair for a long time, and they kept the affair secret as long as they could. But they both got real cocky with the like the affair. That they started, like, he started, like, bragging that he was with her and stuff. And they would go out to, like, parties together. Or they were, like, they'd be Why seen together. Why would you together. brag about an affair? So, like, of course, people started talking. like and, As you would. And, you know, again, during that time, like, again, picturing Bridgerton. Like, everyone was like, oh, do you see Lady Digby over you there? Got- Freaking Lady Gaga's bad romance on a violin playing in the background. Yeah, and, and everyone knows your husband's gone, so it's, like, obvious. Um, so, to make things worse, <laughs> Jane got pregnant oh, again. No. And she was trying to keep it under wraps, and the couple ended up going to, like, the countryside to a hotel. and But the hotel porter ratted them out to Lord Ellenborough, so Edward found out. And at first, he was kind of, like, in disbelief, you know, like, he thought it was just rumors, and he didn't really want to believe it, but he did end up hiring, like, a private investigator, and he confirmed everything. And when was this? Uh, this was around 1830. Okay. So, wow, private investigator even then. He, yeah, that's what it said. Like, he hired somebody to, like... He had, he had a minion. Uh, a little guy in a white wig just running around. <laughs> <laughs> watch them i mean so of course divorce was unheard of during this time it wasn't impossible divorce was a thing but it was unheard of during with the like upper class it was a like, reputation you, just some, killer yeah you don't do that yeah it was just something you didn't do so it was just even nowadays like, <laughs> like now you hear a bit more don't get me wrong like with celebrities and whatnot but even it's, then you can tell it's like a taint to your name and in an unintentional way. I don't know. It's Whereas like, Elizabeth Taylor flaunted it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jaja. I mean, so did Princess Diana. <laughs> By all means, she had her reasons. <laughs> so, like, t- <laughs> it said in the, what I was researching, she was most likely, uh, like, Edward was probably going to make her go to the countryside, have the baby in secret, you know, and just kind of keep it under wraps, but shun her, like, he uh, can't get rid of you, but I'm going to hide you. Wow. <laughs> and uh, she was not for that, obviously. So yeah. she was like, I'm not going to do that and just pretend that, like, because, you know, that's what they did. They would have affairs and they would have babies and they would pretend like the baby is, like, a niece or something wow. that they just took in or 
I mean, that happened a lot during that time. Yeah. And so that's probably what was yeah, going to happen. Yeah, the plan was. Yeah. And, and again, she was like, uh, no, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and Prince Felix, on the other hand, <laughs> that fool ran back to his homeland to avoid any ruin to oh. his reputation. Oh. Oh, and he ditched her. <laughs> he didn't know. He was a prince. He kind of had his name tainted, you know? He dipped like avocado. He dipped. Like, he dipped, for <laughs> sure. He made guacamole but out of that. Jade insisted on following him, you know, even no matter how hard her friends and family, like, tried to just have her stay and face the music in England. She was like, uh, nah, I'm just gonna go. Like, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the, um... Uh, uh, uh take the right i'll take the backlash yeah, yeah. like I, I just won't come back so she left and she went to uh basil in switzerland where she gave birth to a daughter matilde in november 1829 and um her and her husband got officially divorced in 1830 so it's like you can only she, hide it for so long so they got the divorce anyway yeah so and she's like she didn't care like it she didn't care it was like yeah like it, it, affect me. it tainted her name and it, it basically ruined her reputation in england so she was just like oh, i'll just go somewhere else then, exactly you know? like emotionally she's like uh i mean well, honestly start I, anew. I would do it <laughs> start like, anew. You know what? screw it like i'll just go start over somewhere else i know? would hope you didn't you wouldn't put yourself in this situation oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hypothetically if i lived in this time if you were her because i'm sure i did <laughs> but so obviously uh jane and felix were now living together but of course it didn't last long you know the puppy love phase like went out the window and he was getting cold feet about the whole thing and he even threw the good old catholic card in her face like uh you're divorced i can't marry you <sighs> so there was like no going nowhere with that and yet the two idiots still decided to have another kid anyway cue and, the eye roll and this one they they named this one felix jr <laughs> But unfortunately, baby Felix passed away a week after his birth. Oh, poor thing. So, again, I think that was just, like, the last straw for both of them. So they basically broke up after that. Jesus. Um, so she, so Jane, devastated from the loss of her child, you know, she went and off to... And her relationship. Yeah, and her relationship. She went off to Munich. And there she met Ludwig I, king of Bavaria. Oh, I like their green and donuts. She, <laughs> Uh, she she did too. <laughs> she had an affair with, so there she had an affair with the king. Uh, it didn't last that long, but still, you she had an affair with a freaking king. Oh my god! And <laughs> this girl, man, <laughs> like, I don't know. If she's trying to be a Vita or what? Like climbing her way up to popularity? Who knows? I mean, again, like she's not Evita. the only woman who like has lived a life like this and you know, i'm sure there was other women who like had affairs and stuff but she's going for like princes and, kings yeah like a high, baron mira yeah like wow oh but, and it said that uh during this time too she was on and off with felix too so she was kind of like bouncing between the king and felix like come on <laughs> like oh i'll just I'll sleep with the king, and then oh, I'm bored with you. I'm gonna go back to the prince. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know it takes Crazy, a lot of work. right. It takes a lot of work to be a woman, but it takes balls to be a lady. And this <laughs> woman here is a piece of work. <laughs> so uh, when that fell off, her next lover, <laughs> um, he was a a German baron. His name was Karl von uh, Vening. The Veningen? 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 Yeah. Carl von Veningen. Sorry. We're sounding out names. Um, <laughs> we're, we're five. So so this one, she got pregnant by. And um, she, <laughs> she gave birth to a son in Italy, and his name was Herbert in January of 1833. Um and she, uh, once again she was in, she was escaping scandal because she was pregnant with you know like a bastard um so she was hiding in, in Italy and that's where she had the baby and she ended up putting her son in a foster family until she can get him back and Matilde she left with Felix's sister hmm. so she was i think she was basically raised by the sister um and it's at this kids, man. and at this point Jane um was trying to get married again she thought 
like, well, I, I need just to, I just need to do the right thing so I can get my kids back. So she was just like, I'll just marry the Baron. So she ends up marrying the Baron. She got her son back. I don't think she got Mathilde back, but I, wow. I, don't, I didn't really specify on, on Mathilde too much. Um, and she ended up having another child mm -hmm. with the Baron um, after their marriage. It was a daughter named Bertha, and she was born in September 1834. <clears throat> and after a while, again, Jane was not content in her marriage. They had nothing in common. She was bored with him. I mean, she jumped gone, into blah, it. Blah, 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 like, what she... <laughs> It, <laughs> what you think was gonna happen really yeah oh so by 1838 jane embarked on another affair and this time she caught the eye of a good-looking greek count mm -hmm. and like a count a count like picture john stamos as <laughs> this count girl she's just going all over the spectrum a, of monarchy a Greek like count, yeah. oh my gosh and this count okay i'm gonna attempt his name it's really cool huh but I don't know if I'm going to say it right. <laughs> His name is Count uh, Byrighton Theotokis. Again, sorry. <laughs> it's a really cool date, though. Yeah, it looks tight. It looks cool. It looks fun to write. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> this affair that she started with the Count was so passionate and, like, you know, she was all over him. They ended up eloping. Oh, wow. And, um, but, of course, they were apprehended by Carl, her husband. <laughs> Because she's already married. <laughs> and um, the Baron challenged the Count into a duel. Oh, my God. Um, a duel. A duel, right? The story has it all. Right? The drama. Yeah, like, there's drama, this, passion. This lady's life would be a fun movie. Like, Really, though? I'm, it'd be so, like, yeah, no, I've never heard of girly, her. But it was, yeah. <laughs> um, but, so the duel happened, and um, no one died. Carl did get injured, I think. And for his honor's sake, more or less, um, for the act of chivalry's sake, the Baron nobly allowed Jane to leave, but he kept the children. Okay. So that's what happened after the duel. I guess that probably was part of the duel. I shoot you and keep the kids. Yeah, so... You keep your life. I think they had a, a duel with swords. Oh. I think. I don't know. I Still, I, I, I injure you and I keep the children. Either way, he was like, fine, go. If you want to be with him and wow. he's fighting for you, he basically won the duel with, without killing him. Yeah. So he was like, okay, fine, I'm keeping the kids then. Uh, it's, it's harsh but fair. Yeah. She shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So she went off with the count and um, moved to Greece. Um, so she and the count are married and they had a son named Leonidas. Oh nice. And he was born in Paris in March of 1840. I'm digging these names, dude. Um, and they got officially got him married a year later and she converted to the Greek Orthodox faith. Oh wow. So for him and so and oh and she waited until after she was legally divorced. <laughs> Again. <laughs> okay, at least okay. From the Baron. Um so the couple moved to Athens and the marriage was fine for a while, but it suffered after Jane and the Count lost their beloved son. Because they were they were all over this son. He was six years old. He fell off a balcony from the oh, house of their, their mansion. Oh, no. So af after that tragedy, oh, their, their relationship like fell apart. And they... Well, history repeats itself. Yep. So the way they were coping was cheating, both of them. So he went back to drinking and like womanizing. Frida all over. <laughs> yeah. And Jane did what she always did, so she had an affair. This affair she had this time was an affair with King Otto of Greece. <laughs> okay, I've heard of King Otto. She had an affair, which ruffled his wife's feathers, to say the least. Oh my. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot about the queen. I. <laughs> Oh, oh, all these, n I can't, I can't even say what I want to say. All these nasty people and their poor spouses who are probably doing the same thing. Oh my I mean, God, what a tangled web we weave, man. <laughs> what a web. So again, Jane was divorced. Simmons are disgusting. <laughs> In 1846. So and around this time, she began a new relationship with the brigand general. His name was, okay, 
that's another another name. Oh, Sorry. she went lower on the totem pole now. She thought she got with this, the general. Yeah, so this guy was like an adventurer and like so I pictured like a like you know, a grizzled handsome man that's like uh, come sail with me, you know, like oh of God. course you're going to be like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> so she ran off with this guy. In his name, I apologize. Let's see if I could do this. <laughs> uh Chris Dolius Hotsi Pertos. We'll take it. Holy shit, what a pronunciation. It's hard because, like, I want to pronounce things in Spanish. In Spanish, right? But it's not Same. that way. Yeah, because I'm like, because I'm sure it's not three tios. <laughs> three tios. Like, I don't know. Again, cool name. But, um,. Again, he provided her with, like, a life of excitement, and he, like, opened the door for her of, like, being an adventurer. So she left, like, her cushy little life as, like, a lady for a while, and she was with him. I, It didn't say where they went. Again, I didn't, like, it didn't say in the website, so I didn't really, like, look into it. But they traveled. Um, and, uh, again, it didn't last long. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean... It, wouldn't wouldn't you leave too if you catched your man with you know your maid? <laughs> so she caught. I would do more than that. <laughs> she caught him with the maid. So. Oh come on! So they broke up, and she was fed up with men at this point. She was just <sighs> fed up with it, and she said they were nothing but trouble and heartache. And she got a taste. She got a taste of the adventure one again, and she so she took off. She was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go and just see the world. So she decided to go check out the Middle East. It's like, I'm going to go and do me. Yep. <laughs> and around this time, Jane was in her 40s by this time. She was in like, I don't know, late 40s or early 40s, but she was still in her 40s. Which back then is old. And yes, but she was still described as very youthful looking like she was still beautiful in her age and she was like very sultry sophisticated that's so how she, people described her she still. can still pull off a 20 like uh, yeah <laughs> she got a 20 oh my gosh oh my <laughs> so gosh around this time she has been like going around and she was very fascinated by the syrian warrior queen zenobia so she decided to go travel to uh palmyria Okay. Um, where she saw the remains, uh, or, yeah, the, like, remains of the kingdom of Queen Zenobia. She was, like, all about this woman. So she was just going out there doing some research. And there is where she met um, a young man. And mind you, she was not looking for love. She was not looking for a man. She just happened to meet him. And she said, and she said it was the love of her life. The other ten weren't? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> but this guy was different. Like, it was just different. They all say. I believe her. Um, I'm going to jack up this name. <laughs> I think his name is Sheikh Medjul El Mizrab. Okay. I Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming, It's Arabic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it... I don't... It was, it's... Really cool looking name. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. He was, a, again, because of his title, just like you said, he is educated, erudite, and he was very, very charming. And again, he was 20 years her junior. So, Does um, he know that? Yeah. Okay. He, he was infatuated with her. I think it said he broke off a, an engagement or, like, or something that he had to be with her. Wow. Like, he wanted to be with her um so they got married and this time they stayed married until her death and so they lived the last years of her life um just basically they would spend six months living like a nomadic tent life you know on the um in the desert Whoa. just doing research and stuff like that and then the other half they would just go kick it in their mansion in damascus so that was the life they lived. They would just go and go on adventures for six months out of the year and then come back home. She had, a mom, she had her last years were basically retirement. Like, exactly. Yeah, basically. With with the young, <laughs> sexy Arabic guy, I guess. <laughs> and she. And um, 
it, and it says that like she was very loved by his like tribe and like that she lived a very happy ending. And was he Arabic or Indian? It, it said Arabic. Okay, okay. Because she uh, she learned Arabic for him. Okay. She never converted to like the Islam, but um, she learned Arabic and she like adopted like the like the culture. Did she convert out of the Greek Orthodox if she converted? It didn't say okay. if she converted out or. Okay. I was just wondering. Um, mm-hmm. I I. I don't think so because she didn't convert to Islam, but okay, he was okay with it. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> they just wanted each other. That's all they wanted. Yep. Um, and I thought this was kind of cute. So Jane was referred to as Shaika um, Alabwan, which translates again very terribly. <laughs> translates into mother of milk because of her skin. Aww. That's what she was referred to with, like her husband's tribe and stuff like that mother of milk i thought that was kind of cute yeah <laughs> um but she she died of a fever um in on august 11th 1881 and it said she died with her husband like he was Aww. holding her she was i think she was 78 years old she lived a long life long sultrous mm-hmm. life and that's the adventure of Lady Jane Digby. And, wow. um, I did see that, because I was like, oh, I like to see if, like, uh, there's any movies made after, you know, people mm-hmm. like that, because sometimes there are. Yeah. And surprisingly, there's not. The, the only thing that is, uh, I guess, a show, it's called Around the World in 80 Days. It's a TV show. And Lady Digby is portrayed by, uh, Lindsay Duncan. Okay. I don't know who that is. I think I've heard that name before. Um, but that's the only thing that has been adapted of her life, which is crazy because that was that was intense. That's a what a story, right? Yeah, what a roller coaster. Yeah, like that like of affairs. When I was like writing it all down, I was like literally picturing it in my head, like Bridgerton. And stuff, that's what know? I was picturing in my head while you were telling it. Like, like what a story, and she just went. You know, bouncing around, monkey barring. Yeah. Like. I mean, she she. It sounded like there was a couple tough times for her, but at the same time, like she didn't she didn't let any of those affairs stop her from being from Herself. doing what she wanted to do. Yeah. You know, like as wrong as they were. <laughs> and I mean, in the but, end, she also learned too. You can't go just searching for love. You gotta let it find you. Yeah, because obviously she was searching for it. She just, I think. I think she wanted to have, like, a husband, but she just got bored with them. She just kept picking the wrong guys. Exactly. And so, that obviously, they didn't stay compatible. They didn't stay loyal. So, when you go looking, that's when you get manipulated easier. She, she, yeah. And it sounded like she did a lot with the... Um, a lot of them especially with, like... I, I can't get over how she was just monkey barring to the freaking... Kings, princes, barons, a sheik, a general, <sighs> like a bohemian. Yeah, Jesus, crazy. Huh? And it's sad because, um, uh, sounds like the only kids that she that did survive. They, I don't think they were. I don't know. I don't know if she was still like in their lives or not. Hmm. I'm curious about that if she was, but you know, I don't think we'll ever know. For all we know, she probably never saw them again, Aww. which sucks. But that was the time. It, <laughs> and a lot of times, I feel like women who have stories like that, like for instance, uh, uh, the Duchess of Davonshire, uh, Daven- Davonshire, Davonshire, Dav- Virginia. Um, she. She, that's another good story. Kira Knightley plays her in the movie The Duchess. Oh, okay. Great movie. But, like, during that time, you know, she had an affair, too. You know, she was in a loveless marriage and everything. It was awful. And he gave her the ultimatum, like, yeah, you can leave. But I'm keeping your children. I'm stripping you of your title. Like, you'll have nothing. And she chose to stay with the kids. And that was sad. But sometimes that's what they did. They would choose... You know, to stay with the kids. Jane sounded. It sounded like Jane chose her freedom rather than staying. I don't know. Granted, I don't know. Though, Again, her kids this could is, have been better off. It sounded like they were. You know, like because 
from what it seemed like, they were. You know, like, they were taken care of. They didn't have their mother. Hopefully they were loved. Hopefully they were loved. <laughs> I, I'm not condoling anything that she's doing. I'm just saying, like, it was just, that was the time. Yep. It was either you pick you or you pick your kids or, you know, the, women didn't have much of a choice no. back then. And Pick yourself or pick them. Mm-hmm. Like, man, the shit women went through is insane. The shit some of us are still but going through. <laughs> Uh, as crazy as a whirlwind of a story this was, like, I still, I really liked it. It was fun. She, like. <laughs> it was fun to listen to. I loved it. I feel like if I lived in that time, especially me, <laughs> with yeah. my hard-headed ass, I feel like I would have probably had a life like that. I'm a slut. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> nah. But it, Crazy. I don't know. That was just a crazy one. I was really yeah. excited to tell that one. I'm, I'm, uh, wow. I happened to just see a post about her on Instagram, and uh -huh. I was like, who is this? You know, like how people... Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember who it was. Sorry. But they did a good job, because I was like, who is that? I'm sucked in. I'm interested now, so I looked it up. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that was fun to learn about. Yeah, it was really fun. Well, I hope you guys liked it, too. So, Lady Jane Digby. Wow. Lady Jane. If they make a movie about her, I want to be it. <laughs> I'll dye my hair blonde. I'll be your housemaid. <laughs> she looks pretty, too. I'll post pictures on our Instagram. I'll post some pictures of her. There's a couple, like, portraits painted of her. She, she does look very pretty. Nice. You'll see when I post it. I'll be the stable horse in the you movie. Know, <laughs> 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 it, well, so... Yeah. Uh, but you know what? You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, Let's Go Cruising Podcast. And you can also listen to us on YouTube. Um, you just have to look us up at Let's Go Cruising with Jal and Ray. Um, and you can also email us at Let's Go Cruising Podcast at gmail.com. Submit some stuff to us. Talk to us. Is there anything, is there any other badass women that you want us to talk about? Because I want to learn more. Let us know. Let us know. Because that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, but cool. Let's go cruising back. All right. We're in the mountains still, so I want to see some more leaves. Some more leaves. leaves. So pretty. Okay, well, deuces. Bye. Adios.